Hey backbenchers, today we will be studying entropy on and ectropy on. I'm Dr. Backbencher, let's do this. So we've got an ectropy on and entropy on, right? So ectropy on from its very uh, word ecto, which, which, which kind of denotes towards the outside, uh, compare that to entro, which kind of denotes means towards the inside so what happens is that in ectropion what happens is that the eyelid margin is turned away from the eyeball right so the uh, the the eyelid kind of flips towards the outside compared to entropion where it kind of flips towards the inside right uh let's let's have a let's have a, a little black screen here uh so here's the normal eye right uh here's the normal sorry here's the normal eye and here's the eyelid now now what will happen is if, if it it is turned towards the outside like that due to some reason due to some pathology that is ectropion if it is turned towards uh, the inside like that that is called entropion right simple easy and nothing difficult about that so uh, Eyelid margin is turned away from the eyeball. Eyelid margin is turned towards the eyeball. Right. Uh, symptoms are similar: redness, foreign body sensation, and tearing. Right. Redness, foreign body sensation, and tearing on this side as well. And there are five uh, types of ectropions and five types of entropions, which are very conveniently quite similar. Right. So senile, senile, both of them. Secretricial, psychotricial, mechanical, mechanical, congenital, congenital. And here's the one, here's, this one is a bit different. It's spastic and paralytic, right? And don't worry, we'll come to as each of these uh, uh, in order, right? But one thing we should uh, keep in mind before coming towards them is that most of these, uh, most of these types of uh, problems, their usual um, course of, of management a surgery right and there are different surgical procedures with very specific names for that i will not be really going into that you can check out your textbooks for that i'll not be lengthening the video because of that uh, and and honestly uh, even if i took the names of them you wouldn't really understand because uh, you can't explain a surgery uh, on, on on slides right you have to actually see the surgery on a in a video or something like that or live uh, when it is being performed so yeah, and and besides, uh, for examination purposes, you can learn it from there, and you don't really want to know the details of how the surgery is performed. Uh, performed that is not uh, that is not our level uh, right now. Uh, so let's uh, move forward. Let's start with uh, ectropion type one, that is uh, senile ectropion, right? So senile, the word senile usually is, is related with old age, right? So what happens with old age is that there is laxity of tissues and loss of tone of the orbicularis muscle. Remember when we uh, discussed that the orbicularis oris, uh, sorry, the orbicularis oculi muscle is the one uh, which gives uh, the shape and, and it, it helps in, in the movement of the eyelid. So as a, if, if there is a loss of tone of the orbicularis because of old age, right, there could also be loss of tone of orbicularis because of uh, cutting off the nerve supply or something like that and we will discuss that type of ectropion as well in, in the later slides so right now old age right laxity of tissues tissues get lax they get loosened as a result uh, the eyebrow kind of no, the eyelash kind of falls towards the outside and it is usually present in the lower eyelid and treatment is horizontal uh, eyelid shortening uh, lateral Canthoplasty, as I said before, uh, name of procedures, can't really explain here. Uh, and the repair of the lower eyelid retractors. This is just memorization, right? Uh, but just for your understanding, you can just say uh, we, we do certain surgical procedures to fix that. Right. Then there is secretricial ectropion, right? This is a little bit, uh, you, you need to know a little bit about this because, see, the word psychiatricial uh, is derived from the word psychiatrics. Right, and psychiatrics refers, or when, whenever we talk about psychiatrics, we actually are talking about a scar, right? So, so imagine if there is uh, some injury to the to the um, to the eyelid, which results in scar formation, and that scar formation uh, that results in something that results in a condition which pulls your uh, eyelid towards the outside. So etiology, cause of psychiatric ectropion is shortening of the anterior lamella, right? 
Then there's, uh, it can be because of burns, trauma, tumor, infection, and chronic inflammation because of certain conditions like acne and atopic dermatitis and eczema, right? Uh, uh, just memorize these few things, right? Uh, burns, trauma, tumor, you can, and you can, you can, it's, it's convenient, right? You can understand how a burn or a trauma could cause ectropia and how it could cause the eyelid to, to flip or, or towards the outside, right? And treatment is, uh, the revision and relaxation of the psychiatrics, right? If there's a burn, if there's a trauma, and it leaves behind a scar, so uh, try to do something with the scar, right? Uh, revision and relaxation of the of the scar of the psychiatrics, and of course surgical intervention. As I said again, there are procedures you can look it up in the book. And then there is a congenital atropia, uh, which occurs uh, when the baby is born. It is unknown how that happens. Uh, Baby is born and his eyelids or her eyelids are flipped towards the outside and treatment is against surgical repair. Um, mechanical ectropion, uh, okay, this one is uh, interesting a little bit. Uh, now, there are certain conditions that that may also, uh, that can lead to ectropion. For example, like tumors of the eyelid, there's herniated orbital fat, poorly fitted glasses or spectacles and chronic edema. So, and these these are the kind of conditions which might cause the eyelid to flip towards the outside. And over here, you don't do surgery, you treat the underlying condition. So if there is chronic edema, you do something uh, for that, right? If there is a tumor of the eyelid, you, you cut the eyelid. Of course, that's surgery again, but if you treat the underlying condition, that'll, uh, that'll, that'll cause the uh, mechanical atropion to, to just go away, right? And uh, the eyelid will be back towards normal. And then there is the paralytic ectropion. This one is a bit conceptual, right? So etiology, it occurs after cranial nerve 7 palsy. Cranial, cranial nerve 7 is the facial nerve, right? Cranial nerve 7 palsy. And uh, what happens is that if there's some damage of the cranial nerves, it causes some of the muscles uh, of the eyelid to loosen, right? Because uh, there is no nerve supply to them. There, it, it loses its tone. As a result, the eyelid flips out. Come on, if, if you have a nerve palsy, if there's some problem with the nerve, uh, let's say it's cut off because of something, and so you can't really fix that. So these treatments are mainly to control the symptoms, right? Lubri uh, lubrication, artificial tears. And here's an, an, a new word, tarsorephy, right? Tarsorephy is, uh, it is a procedure in which people in which uh, the, the the surgeons stitch the eyelids of uh, a guy of, or, or a person, right? And and as a result, there is a smaller opening uh, of the eye. So the eye looks a bit smaller, right? And uh, the lubrication and artificial tears will have more effect. I mean, if you have an eye which is this big, right? And and it it keeps on getting uh, it keeps on getting dried, and you have to put artificial tears in it. So it's it's a good idea if you if you could somehow stitch these and these ends together, right? Not so much that he can't see, but if you stitch these together and and that results into a a little bit of a smaller eye, right? That will be convenient for the patient as well. Uh, uh, yeah, and until uh, you find a way to fix this problem, right? So. Uh, they, they, they do tarsorephy procedure to, to stitch these eyelids together and uh, that is beneficial, that is helpful. Then we come towards entropion, that is bending towards the inside of the eyelids, right? And senile entropion, again, caused by old age, right? right senile old age right and uh, again laxity of a few certain structures a few muscles stretching of the muscles and supporting structures right so old age right old age causes all kinds of problems uh, and and treatment is against surgery right nothing so important about this nothing so there's no rocket science behind it it's just you know simple stuff um, then there's secretricial entropion right if there is some injury towards the inside right uh, before that, we talked about sacrificial ectropion, right? So if you, on the outer side, so if there's the eyelid, right, and you hurt this on the, uh, and there's some injury on the outer side, it tends, this place tends to contract, right? Remember the myocytes uh, we, we studied in, in, in scar formation and granulation tissue, right? So when these contract, it'll pull it towards the outside. That is ectropion, right? But uh, in, uh, yeah, in psychiatrical, Psychiatricial and uh, ectropion, the injury is usually towards the outside.
in case of uh, psychiatrical entropion, you might you can you can kind of guess that the injury will be will be on the inside, right? Posterior lamella. That was the anterior lamella, right? Mm, so and towards the posterior lamella, if you have an injury, uh, there's also conjunctiva here. Remember, so conjunctival injury or uh, the injury of the posterior lamella can cause uh, scar tissue to be formed, and, and as a result, the myocytes and the and the granulation tissue could pull this towards the eyelid towards the inside. Um, so shortening of posterior lamella can be due to scar forming conjunctivitis, right? Conjunctiva, uh, there is an injury to the conjunctiva uh, or conjunctivitis, there is inflammation and it forms a scar. It can cause it to pull, to get pulled towards the inside. And there are conditions like scar uh, in where there is scar forming conjunctivitis like trachoma and uh, Stephen Johnson syndrome, right? We'll study about these in uh, detail uh, in, in later lectures. And it can also occur due to trauma or chemical injury, right? Uh, simple, not so difficult to understand. Treatment is, uh, again, something you need to memorize because you won't really understand it. Uh, tarsal hinge procedure, just remember the name. Mucous membrane graft of the cornea, just remember the name. Uh, just to make it simple for yourself, treatment is, again, uh, surgical intervention right most of them you'll see except for maybe mechanicals uh, most of them is are the most most of these uh, treatments would be actually actually surgical interventions then there's the mechanical entropion right when it bends towards the inside remember i keep uh, i don't want it to confuse both of these extropion and entropion so uh, mechanical entropion because of some mechanical issue the eyelid twists towards the inside right etiology well it, it rarely occurs, right? Maybe in some tumors of the lower eyelid. It might occur in a few tumors, right? But it, it, mechanical entropion is rare. Mechanical ectropion, on the other hand, that is a little bit more common than this. And treatment is, again, tr treat underlying cause. If there is a tumor, treat the tumor, and it'll just go away. Uh, congenital entropion, once again, unknown, and it is also very rare. And congenital entropion usually does not require treatment, right? It... it you know, fixes itself right and if and, and when it comes to treatment again if there is any treatment it will probably be a surgical treatment and you can again I'm, I'm talking I'm saying this again and again go uh, read your books for that I, I do not want to clutter the whole presentation with uh, things that you might not understand right and that would not be uh, very good um, so then there's this spastic entropion uh, this is a little bit interesting compare that to paralytic actropion, there's this spastic entropion, right? So what happens in, in the spastic entropion is that orbicularis oculi spasm occurs, right? There's a spasm of the orbicularis oculi. For whatever reason, there's a, there's a spasm of the orbicularis oculi, and as a result, the eyelid twists towards the inside, right? I'm usually drawing, when I draw this diagram right here, I'm usually drawing the upper eyelid. But remember, most of ectropion, uh, most of the entropions are actually, and even ectropions, they're actually, most of them are more common in the lower eyelid, right? Don't let this confuse you into something uh, like that. Uh, so etiology occurs due to spasm of orbicularis oculi, or may also occur due to essential ble ble blepharospasm, right? Essential blepharospasm. Blepharo eyelid spasm is spasm. Essential, well, essential is just a fancy word, of, fancy way of saying, I don't know. Okay, like essential hypertension. People don't know the the the, the what is why essential hypertension occurs. So essential blepharo spasm, blepharo spasm, right? Uh, uh, there is a spasm of the eyelid, or there is a spasm of the orbicularis oculi, which is also inside the eyelid. Um, treatment is eyelid taping uh, again once again uh, just remember the names uh, Botox injection okay you can you might understand that if there's muscle spasm uh, uh, Botox uh, helps relax muscles right uh, there is eyelid averting sutures for example if the eyelid is towards twisted towards the inside you can kind of you know you can you can you can uh, take this skin over here and this skin over here and then tie them together as a result it'll pull it towards the outside eyelid averting right averting towards the outside eyelid averting uh, sutures and muscle remodeling or resection you can because it's uh, orbicularis ocula you might cut off a part of that muscle right uh, remodel that muscle into uh, something uh, into uh, um, remodel that muscle into something which is not as uh, spasmatic right is spasmatic is that even a word I, I don't know I just made that up right so yeah I think uh, 
that's yeah that's it um, I, I hope you liked it uh, i hope you learned something from it now once again uh, all these uh, surgical procedures they're very difficult to understand and for there are a lot of surgical procedures the names of which i by myself uh, intentionally skipped you can check your books for that if, if the examiners really want it but the reason I didn't, uh, uh, once again, I'm saying this again and again, the reason I didn't put them here because I cannot teach you how a surgery occurs just by these silly little lines that I make, okay? And it, it's difficult and it, it just makes the video longer without any reason. Yeah, I hope you, uh, I hope you liked it. Like, subscribe and share and yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.